Hello, I'm presenting you lecture uterine fibroids or leiomyomas. Uterine leiomyomas or uterine fibroids are steroid hormone responsive benign monoclonal tumors of the smooth muscle compartment myometrium of the uterus. They are not found before puberty but become increasingly common through reproductive age and generally regress after menopause. Their prevalence is age-dependent. They can be detected up to 80% of women by 50 years old. Fibroids are leading indication for hysterectomy, accounting for uh, 39 of all hysterectomies performed annually. The overwhelming majority of fibroids are benign and less than 1 to 1,000 become malignant leomyosarcoma. Etiology and pathogenesis, uh, the identity of the factors and molecular mechanisms involved in the cellular transformation of myometrial cells into leiomyoma remains unknown. Monoclonal origin arising from single cell confirmed by many studies. Genetic basis confirmed by family studies. Global gene expressions, uh, profiling of uterine leiomyomas revealed that hundreds of genes were dysregulated, including those with functional roles in cell proliferation, differentiation, and extracellular matrix production. Cytogenic abnormalities in uterine leiomyomas. Karyotypic abnormalities occur in uh, 40 to 50 percent of uterine leiomyomas and tumors from the same uterus often show different chromosomal changes. Dysregulating in microRNA in the uterine leiomyomas. Several microRNAs exhibit differential expression between normal myometrium and uterine leiomyoma tissue. Growth factors. Several growth factors may appear to play a role in uterine leiomyoma cell proliferation and tumor growth. Major growth factors overexpressed in uterine leiomyomas, including tumor growth factors, epidermal growth factor, plated derived growth factor vascular and arterial growth factor, and uh, insulin-like growth factor. Estrogen and progesterone appear to be promoters of fibroid growth acting in concert. Increased level of estrogen and progesterone result in, in an increased mitotic rate that may contribute to myoma formation by increasing the likelihood of thematic mutation. Inherent abnormality in myometrium of individuals who develop fibroids based on the firing of significantly increased levels of estrogen receptors uh, in myometrium of the fibroids. About the role of estrogen in development of fibroids. Estrogen, although not proved for causing uh, myoma, is definitely implicated in its growth. Uncommon before puberty and regress after menopause. Uh, Higher incidence of uterine fibroids in nulliparous women, common in obese women, may increase during pregnancy. Studies show high uh, concentration of estrogen receptors in leiomyoma than myometrium, common in fifth decade due to anovular cycles with high or unopposed estrogen. This picture shows of, uh, the role of different factors in uh, pathogenesis of uterine fibroids, like genetic alternation environmental and other risks, endocrine dysfunction, and autocrine uh, factors for tumor growth and proliferation. What are the, what are the epidemiological risk factors? Uh, factors that increase risk is the age about uh, 40 to 55 years old, nulliparous or low parity, black woman, family history, obesity, early menarche, diabetes, hypertension, Factors that decrease risk, higher parity, exercise, intake of green vegetables, progesterone-only contraceptives, and uh, cigarette smoking. Menarche. There is a suggestion of slightly increased risk of fibroids associated with early menarche. The early onset of menstrual cycles may increase the number of cell divisions that the, the myometrium undergoes during reproductive years resulting in an increased chance of mutation in genes controlling myometrial proliferation. Parity. Several studies have shown an inverse relationship between parity and the risk of fibroids. A relative risk of fibroids among parous women is about uh, 0.5 compared with nulliparity, and progressive decline in risk relative to the number of the births have been reported. 
age in increased with age in, in prevalence of uh, uterine fibroids during the reproductive years has been demonstrated in several epidemiological studies. Menopause. A reduced risk of fibroids requiring surgery in postmenopausal patients could be due to tumor shrinkage in the absence of hormonal stimulus following the menopause. Obesity. Several studies have found an association between obesity and increased risk uh, uh, of incidence uterine leiomyomas. In a prospective study from Great Britain, the risk of fibroids increased approximately 21% for each 10 kg increase in body weight. Similar results were obtained when the body mass index was analyzed rather than weight. In a case control study, a 6% increase in risk was, was observed for each unit increase in body mass index. A significant increase occurs the, in conversation of circulating adrenal androgens to estrone by excess adipose tissue. The hepatic production of sex hormone binding globulin is decreased, resulting in more unbound physiologically active estrogen. The potential role of diet in genesis of fibroids has received a little attention in literature. In the case control study, a moderate association was found between the risk of uterine myomas and uh, consumption of beef, other red meat and hump, whereas a high intake of green vegetables seems to have a protective effect. Exercise. The possibility of relationship between ex uh, exercise and the occurrence of fibroids has been addressed by comparing prevalences among a large group of former college athletes and non-athletes. Former non-athletes were found to be 1.4 times more likely than former athletes to develop benign uterine tumors. Racial differences. There has been a general acceptance in literature that uterine fibroids are more prevalent in black women than in white women. For instance, in one study, 73% of black women and 48% uh, of uh, white woman had uterine fibroids by ultrasound examination. Oral contraceptives. Report and literature present inconsistencies with regard to the effect of oral contraceptives used upon the growth of uterine fibroids. An earlier report suggested that oral contraceptives may play a role in development of growth of uterine leiomyoma. Some have found no association between the occurrence of fibroids and the use of oral contraceptives. However, others reported a, re a reduction in the risk of uterine fibroids with oral contraceptive use. Hormonal replacement therapy. Fibroids are expected to shrink after menopause, but hormonal replacement therapy may prevent the shrinkage and may even stimulate growth. Xenoestrogens. A diverse group of uh, exogenous compounds, xenoestrogens, processes in the potential to disrupt normal estrogenic function as a result of either estrogenic agonist or uh, antagonist effects. Tamoxifen. Tamoxifen is a uh, partial estrogen agonist that by, uh, binds to estrogen receptors to receive to in receptive cells thereby antagonizing the effects of estrogen by competitively binding to target uh, organ receptors. Because tamoxifen is effective uh, adjuvant therapy for uh, estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, it might be expected to induce uh, regression of estrogen response of uterine fibroids. Indeed, there is an in vitro studies indicating that tamoxifen doesn't inhibit estrogen-stimulated growth of uterine leiomyoma cell lines. However, several clinical studies have now reported the growth or enlargement of uterine fibroids in breast cancer patients undergoing tamoxifen therapy. In some cases, the expansion of tumor volume has been sufficiently great to recure gisterectomy. Types of uterine fibroids. They are more common in uterine corpus, less in cervix. All fib fibroids are interstitial to begin with uh, and then enlarge. It may remain uh, intramural, become subserosal or submucosal. Subserosal may be ped pedunculated and occasionally parasitic receiving blood from other organs, usually omentum. Some mucous fibroids may become pedunculated and present in vagina through the cervix as the fibroid polyps. 
Large some mucous fibroids may pull down the cervix, resulting in chronic inversion. Fibroids can be single or multiple, then can vary in size, location, and perfusion. Fibroids can be classified based on their location, subserosal, projecting outside of the uterus, intramural within the myometrium, and the submucosal, projecting into the cavity of uterus. This classification system has been devised and advocated by FIGO. Uh, type 0 is pedunculated intracavitary uterine fibroids. Type 1 is uh, submucosal uterine fibroids with less than 50% com components intramural. Uh, type 2 of sub, uh, submucous uterine fibroids when the intramural component is over the uh, 50%. Type 3 when the, uh, when the uterine fibroids can text endometrium but it's 100% uh, intramural. Uh, type 4 it's intramural uterine fibroids. Type 5 subserosal uterine fibroids with uh, with the intramural component over um, then uh, 50%. Subserosal uh, uterine fibroids type 6 when the uh, intramural component is less than 50%. Type 7 it's subserosal pedunculated uterine fibroids and type 8 when uh, uh, it's all other uterine fibroids for example cervical, parasitic and others. Uncommon sites are the ligaments of the uterus. Those fibroids are difficult to manage surgically, as they are often near other structures such as the ureters, vessels, and nerves. Cervical fibroids, these fibroids form in cervix, and they can be classified by size. Small, it's from 1 to 5 cm, medium, it's from 5 cm to 10 cm, and large, over the 10 cm. Gross appearance of uterine fibroids, they are multiple, discrete, spherical, uh, pinkish white, firm encapsulated masses protruding from surrounding myometrium. So the capsule is made up of compressed myometrium, uh, giving it a distinct outline. During microscopy, you can see non striated muscle fibers are arranged in, in interlacing bundles of varying size arranged in whole pattern. Varying amount uh, of connective tissue is intermixed with the smooth uh, muscle fibers. Fibroid pathology variants. Uh, you can see some secondary changes in uterine fibroids, for example, intravenous leomatosis is a rare tumor characterized by intramural growth of benign smooth muscle into the venous or lymphatic vessels outside uh, of the limits of uterine fibroid. Another pathological variant of uh, uterine fibroids caused by secondary changes is disseminated peritoneal leomatosis. It's a rare condition which is characterized by nodules of small lumps uh, or small muscle cells located in the peritoneum lining of the abdominal wall and abdominal organs. Another uh, pathological variant is of secondary changes in uterine fibroids is hyaline degeneration. The most common type of degeneration is focal or generalized hyalinization. Hyalinization occurs in more than 60% of leomyomas and is usually extensive. At the microscopic level, hyalinization begins in stromal component that separates the smooth muscle and then progresses to extensive replacement of the smooth muscle cells. Expanded uh, septa have lost their fibrillary structure, assuming a uniform, pale eosinophilic, ground glass appearance. These changes may be localized or it may affect uh, extensive areas of the tumor, occasionally even the whole of it. Another case of secondary changes in uterine fibroids is red degeneration. Red degeneration is commonly seen in women with big fibroids of size more than 5 cm and usually occurs in late second or early third trimester of the pregnancy. Fibroid tissue outgrowing its blood supply, causing ischemia and hemorrhagic necrosis, giving the degenerative fibroid its typical red color. 
Another pathological variant of uterine fibroids is that secondary changes cause edema. Edema is not necessarily uh, secondary to degeneration. Fluid, fluid accumulates uh, for multiple reasons, and uh, edema is the common histopathological finding, observed in, in uh, about 50% of leomyomas. And the microscopic fl uh, fluid is seen in the stroma of the uh, leomyoma, often is uh, in association with collagen. Calcification is the secondary change in changes in uterine fibroids. It occurs in hyalinized tissue in about 4% of leomyomas. The calcification is usually dense and amorphous. This pattern of classification at plain uh, radiography almost exclusively indicates the diagnosis of leomyoma. A rarely observed pattern is ring-like calcification at the margins uh, of leomyoma. Uh, this type of calcification appears to represent thrombosed veins from past red degeneration. Lipoleomyoma is a specific type of leomyoma that contains a substantial uh, amount of fat. The reported prevalence of lipoleomyoma is about uh, 0.8%. At microscopy, Circumscribed areas of adipocytes are seen with, uh, within the leomyoma. Angia, lipoleomyoma, and lipoma are related lesions uh, and more characterized according to their macroscopic components. All of these lesions are con considered to uh, represent fatty metamorphosis of leomyoma. All through some tumors have no smooth muscle compartment. Fibrosis can be uh, degenerating when they outgrow or otherwise lose uh, their blood supply as the consequence of natural or prescribed medical interventions, as will uh, as with uterine artery embolization. However, degeneration occurs at other times, such as during pregnancy, when uh, fibroids often grow rapidly, or during menopause when fibroids begin to die as a result of significant drop in estrogens and progesterone. In this case, you can see uh, the uh, foci of uh, septic ne necrosis of sub big subserosal uh, leomyoma. Cystic degeneration is seen more often after menopause and is less uh, common than uh, the hyaline type uh, comprising only about 4% of, degenerating, uh, of all degenerating uterine fibroids. Under the microscope, cystic degeneration present in a liquid honeycomb pattern. Another pathological variant of uterine fibroid is myxoid degeneration. Uh, it's described as having uh, a melting gelatinous appearance under the microscope with no mitotic activity which means its cells are not dividing and growing like normal cells do. The name myxoid comes from the dif uh, different type of connective tissue that these fibroids have, which is clear and, and mucoid, mucus-like, in nature. The muscle fibers also appear uh, differentially and there is also a significant accumulation of acid mucins. Leomyosarcoma is less than 1%, more common in the fifth decade, diagnosed with the presence of mitotic figures. In this uh, picture shows that you can see pleomorphic nuclei, bizarre forms, binucleated and multinucleated cells are uh, appreciated in this image. Smooth muscle differentiation is become less evident. Clinical features uh, increase in size and number. A uterine tumor rapidly grows after menopause is unlikely to be a fibroid. Around the last period, however, fibroids can grow due to an increased number of the cycles without ovulation and high estrogen levels in the body. Abnormal uterine bleeding or menorrhagia, prolonged and heavy bleeding with normal cycle, subfertility, secondary dysmenorrhea, a new onset of periodic pain, Pressure symptoms from the bowel or bl and bladder, for example, constipation, frequency, chronic urinary uh, tract infections, chronic pelvic pain, dyspareunia, other clinical features, pregnancy-associated symptoms like spontaneous abortion, recurrent abortion, 
abnormal pain and pressure signs in pregnancy, premature rupture of the membranes, dystocia, postpartum hemorrhage. Less common symptoms include forced submucosal, pedunculated fibroids, protrusion through the cervical holes with pain and bleeding, postabserosal pedunculated fibroids, torsion with infection and acute abdominal pain, and separation from the uterus. Malignant change into leiomyosarcoma is less than 1%. The most common uh, complaint is abnormal uterine bleeding. This is the most probably due to uh, an expanded surface of the endometrial lining when a submucosal fibroids bulges into the cavity. But also an increased number of small dilated vessels have been found uh, hinting to other altered growth factors. Menorrhagia can be severe and cause relevant anemia. The extent to which fibroids alter fertility is still under discussion. Uh, women with otherwise unexplained infertility showed better reproductive outcome after myomectomy. Most likely, submucosal fibroids bulging into the cavity can alter blood circulation in, uh, in the stretched endometrium above and uh, distort the uterine cavity or block the fallopian tubes if located near the inner of, uh, orifice or interfere with the sperm uh, transportation. Large fibroids can interfere with the ovum pickup mechanisms. Effects on, of the fibroids on pregnancy. Uh, during pregnancy, it can cause abortion, pressure symptoms, malpresentation, uh, retrodisplacement of the uterus. In labor, uh, it's preterm labor, uterine inertia, Postpartum hemorrhage, dystocia, manual removal of placenta, for pure perium uh, subinvolution, secondary uh, postpartum hemorrhage, pure perial sepsis, inversion. Other effects uh, of pregnancy on fibroids it's increase in size and softening, red degeneration, it's commonly in second trimester. Due to rapid growth, there is a congestion with the interstitial hemorrhage and venous thrombosis. Impaction in pelvis, torsion, infection, injury, pressure necrosis during uh, delivery, rupture of subserous vein it, that can cause internal hemorrhage. Diagnosis. History taken. The main with what we need to ask our patients is about age of menarche as the proxy indicator of a longer exposure to estrogen and progesterone during their reproductive lifespan. Parity and history of miscarriages, infertility, present desire for children, actual complaints, duration of symptoms. Specifically ask about bleeding pattern, pain, dysmenorrhea and pressure signs. History of previous symptoms that might be associated with fibroids. History of sexually transmitted infections. Previous abdominal and vaginal operations. Less to menstrual peri periods with duration and irregularity previous or actual use of contraceptives and types of contraceptives, weight and height and nicotine and alcohol intake. The next in investigations is abdominal palpation. If the patient had a, a peritoneal signs and might not have a normal fibroid, but either something else or a fibroid distortion or infection and infection can be found. Speculum examination. If there is a uterine fibroids in the lower part of the uterus, they can deviate the cervix to one side or shorten it through the traction. And you should always take the opportunity to screen for cervical cancer. The menopal palpation assess the size of the uterus and its mobility, assess the uterine shape, whether you can feel humps on it uh, and where and whether it's very, it is very broad. What other fibro uh, examination findings can be? Uh, this is in general examination, anemia due to prolonged heavy bleeding, if due to abdominal palpation, if uh, the uterine fibroids more than 12 weeks size, uh, femur nodular arising from pelvis, lower limit can be reached, relatively well defined, mobile from side to side, non-tender, dual on percussion, no free fluid in abdomen. Per speculum, cervix can be uh, pulled higher up. Per vaginum examination, uterus enlarged, nodular. <clears throat> Different diagnosis from a variant tumor. Uterus is uh, not separately felt. 
transmitted movement present, notch not felt. Perorectum examination may help in some difficult cases. Ultrasound always start with the vaginal probe to better assess the cervical area, the endometrium, and if possible, the adnexa uh, to diagnose fibroids. Uterine fibroids have a clear border to adjustment myometrium as the latter uh, surrounds them like a capsule. They are mostly darker than the myometrium. Submucosal fibroids are better diagnosed with vaginal probe. MRI. Why ultrasound may be the most common technique? Magnetic resonant imaging is the most powerful diagnostic tool used for imaging purposes. In the case of fibroids, MRI can uh, distinguish lamiomas from other intramural lesions. Mag Magnetic resonance imaging is most accurate imaging modality for the exist of fibroids. It can precise fibroids mapping and characterization possible. It can, uh, you can use it to differential diagnosis from adenomyosis, differential diagnosis from adnexal pathology. It can detect small uterine fibroids less than one centimeters. Gistrocytingography can be done uh, for infertility evaluation. Coincidental finding of filling defects may be seen. Like on this picture, you can see filling defects. Direct visualization. These techniques are most, more invasive and expensive than an ultrasound or magnetic resonance imaging. They are usually performed alone with uh, surgeries or instances of highly concerning symptoms. Nevertheless, they provide clear and direct imaging of the uterus and in turn fibroids. Gistroscopy. During this diagnostic procedure, a small telescope is inserted into the vagina to examine the inside of the womb, allowing the surgeon easily to visualize the fibromas. Laparoscopy. This slightly more invasive procedure allows direct visualization of the outside of the uterus and the surrounding pelvic structures. Differential diagnosis of uterine fibroids, its pregnancy, adenomyosis, ovarian tumor, ectopic pregnancy, endometriosis, tuber ovarian masses. For patients with uterine fibroids, make sure to contain the minimum of the following laboratory investigations. Hemoglobin to assess the amount of anemia to decide whether the patient needs an operation or not, and whether you may need a blood transfusion. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate or what blood cells count to know if there is uh, uh, pre-existing infection. Big fibroids can be necrotic without symptoms, which will raise their uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate and maybe even their white blood cells count. Uh, blood grouping and cross-matching for operation or to correct anemia prior to operation. Urinalysis to detect urinary tract infection as a source of post-operative infection prior to operation. Treatment options. Expected management uh, is acceptable in those who are asymptomatic. Consider annual follow-up to monitor size and growth. Indication. Asymptomatic uh, incidental fibroids, their size uh, less than 12 weeks near and menopause. Prerequisites. Regular follow-up every six months routine pelvic examination, base light imaging to compare regression. Medical management, not a definitive treatment for symptomatic relief from pain, non-steroidal non anti-inflammatory drugs, decreased menstrual blood loss, preoperatively to decrease the size of uterine fibroids, drugs that use progestogens, oral or intrauterine devices, antiprogestogens, androgens, gonadotropin releasing hormone analogs, selective estrogen re receptor modulators and selective progesterone receptor modulators, aromatase inhibitors, progesterones that used for treatment of uterine fibroids, it's medroxyprogesterone acetate, noretesterone acetate. Uh, their indication is usually to delay surgery. A few words about medical management for uterine fibroids less than 3 cm. If the fibroids are less than 3 cm and the uterine cavity is not distorted, consider treatment, treatments in the following order. Levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system for at least 12 months. 
Levonorgestrel and uterine system have been widely accepted as an effective treatment for heavy menstrual bleeding. Observational studies have shown a reduction of uterine uh, volume bleeding and an increase in gematocrit. Progesterone also includes endometrial atrophy. Another advantage is that it provides contraception. A randomized control trial showed uh, that the levonorgestrel intrauterine system was more effective than uh, combined oral contraceptive pills in reducing menstrual loss and improving hemoglobin levels. But progesterone reason intrauterine devices can be used to, uh, with fibroids less than 12 weeks size with menorrhagia, expulsion rates higher in presence of fibroids. Uh, they contain levonorgestrel releasing in 20 nanogram in day. Fibroids decreases in size uh, in 6 12 uh, months of use. May have variable effects on uterine myomas depending upon balance of growth factors. Few studies have shown beneficial results of using intrauterine devices with levonorgestrel for uh, treatment option of uterine. Another medical management for treatment of uterine fibroids is tranexamic acid, antifibrinolytic agent approved for treatment of heavy menstrual bleeding. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they are used to reduce menstrual blood loss and dysmenorrhea. They are prostaglandin antagonists, which prevent the uterus contracting, leading to pain. Combined oral contraceptive pills, approved for treatment of heavy menstrual bleeding. Mechanism of action, of action is endometrial atrophy. Associated with decreased risk of fibroids and reduced symptoms from other gynecological conditions. Nortesterone. It's long acting, acting in progesterone only injectables. This form of treatment is thought by uh, to induce endometrial atrophy through sizing it from uh, for the treatment of heavy menstrual bleeding. Nifepristone is antiprogesterone that can be used for treatment of uterine fibroids. It gives uh, using uh, of uh, mifepristone gives promising result in decreasing of uterine uh, myomas volume by 26 to 74%, no effects on bone density, and the metrial hyperplasia may be, limits, uh, may be limited for long-term use. If fibroids are 3 cm or more in diameter and the woman has heavy menstrual bleeding or medical treatment is required preoperatively to reduce size and vascularity of the fibroids, consider the following. Gonadotropine releasing hormone agonists uh, with add back hormonal replacement therapy, limit use to six months. Gormonal, uh, gonadotropine uh, releasing hormone agonists reduce hormonal stimulation of fibroids. It can reduce fibroids to approximately 25 to 50% of their size within three months, but the fibroids can return to their former size within three six months of stopping treatment. Gantropin releasing hormone agonists also cause amenorrhea, menopausal symptoms, and bone loss. Uh, some recommendations uh, say that gantropin releasing hormone agonists can be used preoperatively for three to four months prior to gysterectomy or myomectomy when the uh, fibroids uh, are causing an enlarged or distorted uterus. Gantropin releasing hormone agonists are licensed for reduction of uterine fibroids in women with heavy menstrual bleeding up to six months. Side effects of gantropin releasing hormone agonists can be minimized by giving at back hormonal replacement therapy with low dose of estrogen progesterone such as Ebolon. So, gantropin releasing hormone agonists like triptoralin, lupralit, gazerilin can be used intramuscularly once in months, up to three months. Uh, some advantages, as we say, that they decrease in size of uterine fibroids, decreases in bleeding that can increase hemoglobin levels, uh, decreases blood loss during surgery, helps to convert gysterectomy into myomectomy, helps to convert abdominal gysterectomy into, into the vaginal gysterectomy, Disadvantages of gantropin releasing hormone uh, analogs uh, uh, It's high cost, gipoestrogenic side effects caused by medical menopause, effects is reversible, 
rarely uh, it can give uh, more bleeding due to de degeneration of uterine fibroids, occasionally difficulty in uh, enucleating during myomectomy. Uh, another type of drugs is gantripinilizing hormone antagonists like tetrorelix. It can be used uh, in 60 milligrams intramuscular repeated after three, uh, six, four months if necessary. Initial flare up does not occur. Selective estrogen receptor modulator, for example, raloxifen, can be used in uh, dosage of uh, 60 milligrams in day. It's tried for uh, six to 12 months. Higher doses uh, required for effective decrease in, in size of uterine fibroids, and it's better if combined with gantropin release and hormone analogs. Selective progesterone receptor modulator, azoprisnil, is used in, in dosage from 5 to 25 milligrams a day. Uh, mechanism of inhibitory action is not uh, yet known. Possible risk of endometrial hyperplasia is not studied. Aromatase inhibitors directly inhibit uh, estrogen synthesis and rapidly produce hyperestrogenic state. Padrozole, letrozole is tried in a couple of studies. 71% uh, reduction occurred in 8 weeks. It appears to be promising therapy for uterine fibroids. This picture shows the application points for aromatase inhibitors and selective progesterone receptor modulators on the uh, uterine fibroids uh, growth. There are some new modalities of treatment for uterine fibroids. It's laparoscopic myolysis, uterine artery embolization, uh, mag magnetic resonance guided focused ultrasound ablation. Laparoscopic myolysis by neodymium doped yttrium aluminium garnet laser or long bipolar needle. Ele electrode uh, blood supply of myoma is coagulated during laparoscopy. Results in atrophy of uh, uterine fibroids. Applicable if myoma is about from uh, 3 to 10 centimeter size and less than 4 in number. Interventional radiology, uterine artery embolization. Uterine artery embolization can be offered as a treatment for symptomatic large, uh, bigger than three centimeters for multiple fibroids. Uterine artery embolization is not recommended treatment option for a degenerating fibroid. This procedure is performed by interventional radiologist under local anesthetic. This involves the occlusion of the uh, uterine arteries uh, with uh, tiny macroembolic particles, which causes the fibroid to shrink. The resulting ischemia is not permanent. Uh, recommendations has reviewed the evidence and found that it's associated with a reduction of fibroids volume of uh, 40 to 70 percent. However, the reinterventional rate at two years is about uh, 14 percent. Improvement in symptoms were reported between 62 to 95 of women. Uterine artery embolization is associated with the 3% uh, rate of major complications, which include septicemia and gisterectomy. High vascularity and solitary fibroids are associated with a greater chance of long-term success. Pregnancy, active infection, desire for fertility, and suspicion of malignancy are absolute contraindications. Risk of ovarian failure must be cancelled. Uh, post embolization syndrome, fever, vomiting, pain can occur. Magnetic resonance guided focused ultrasound. Uh, MRI guidance is used to direct ultrasound to tissues to elect coagulative necrosis via thermal ablation. Surgical management. There can be two types of operation for uterine fibroids. Myomectomy, transabdominal, transvaginal, gistroscopic, laparoscopic, or it can be gisterectomy, transabdominal, transvaginal, it can be laparoscopically uh, assisted vaginal gisterectomy or total laparoscopic gisterectomy. Surgery is indicated if medical therapies are unsuitable or have failed. 
The type of surgery depends on the site and size of the fibroids. Another type of operation is endometrial ablation. This procedure involves the destruction of the endometrial lining for the relief of heavy menstrual bleeding. Fibroids with a diameter less than 3 cm are not contraindication. A study showed that the combination of gastroscopic fibroid resection and plus endometrial ablation provides 90% uh, of women with reduced menstrual loss at one year, but up to 30% uh, need further treatment at two years. Surgical management. Myomectomy is preferred in uh, cases of infertility, recurrent pregnancy loss when no other cause can be found for it, for young patients, for patients who wish to preserve their uterus. This video shows laparoscopic myomectomy. Uh, this procedure is an option for, for women who wish to preserve their uterus or retain their fertility. Uh, it can be performed by the laparoscopic route or by open surgery for intramural and subserosal fibroids. Myomectomy reduces the need of the further treatment as compared with the uterine artery embolization. You can see uh, the surgeon make the incision on the uterine wall, then uh, remo removing of the uh, uterine fibroids. So uh, laparoscopic myomectomy uh, includes in three phases. It's excision of myoma, uh, repair of endometrium by uh, of myometrium by suturing the uterine wall and extraction of the uh, myoma. This uh, treatment uh, option, laparoscopic myomectomy, is suitable for subserous and intramural fibroids up to seven ten, uh, up to ten centimeters in size. Now the surgeon makes suturing of the uterine wall in place of localization of uterine fibroid. So, as we say about laparoscopic myomectomy, it includes in three phases, excision of uh, myoma, repair of myometrium, and extraction of myoma. Fibroid uh, excised are removed by electronic macellators or through the posterior colpotomy incision vaginally. Hysteroscopic myomectomy for submucous uterine fibroids causing infertility, abnormal uterine bleeding or pain. Criteria is uh, less than 5 cm in size, less than 50% uh, of intramural component, and less than 12 cm uterine size. Gantropin releasing hormone analogs can be give, given preoperatively to decrease the size of uterine fibroids. Malignancy, infection, and excessive mural component is contraindications. Advantages, short procedure, rapid recovery, and uh, all disadvantages of laparotomy avoided. This video shows uh, gastroscopic resection of submucous sub uterine fibroids, fibroid type 0. It's uh, minimally invasive approaches of surgical treatment for submucosal fibroids. Uh, they can be employed to, to treat symptomatic fibroids. The most common indications for this procedure are abnormal uterine bleeding, as we say, recurrent pregnancy loss and infertility. In general, submucosal fibroids type uh, 0, 1 and 2, up to 4 or 5 cm in diameter, can be removed hysteroscopically by experienced surgeons. Type 2 uterine fibroids are more likely to require two stages, two-stage procedure uh, than the type 0 and 1 because of the risk of excessive fluid uh, absorption and uterine perforation. Again about myomectomy, uterine reconstruction is important. Now use several layers if, uh, of uh, interrupted single sutures to close the gap of, uh, in the myometrium left by the fibroids. There should be as little space as possible to reduce the possibility of gematoma and further necrosis within the myometrium. Current expert options is to allow a period between surgery and pregnancy of uh, four to six months.
Abdominal myomectomy. Uh, when other factors for infertility should be ruled out, uh, consent for gysterectomy, blood matched and handy, pop smear and endometrial sampling to rule out malignancy, medical or mechanical means to control bl blood loss, it's uh, Bonnie's myomectomy clamp, uh, rubber tourniquet, manual like finger compression uh, pressure at isthmic region, using of vasopressin diluted in um, Sal uh, saline infiltrated uh, before putting the incision. Bonnie's hood operation. It's one of the surgical techniques to reduce the blood loss and form an uh, anatomical structure after myomectomy. It's used for large posterior fundal fibroids. Uh, tra by transversion of the fundal uh, incision uh, made posterior, after uh, enucleating uterine wall is sutured uh, fundus as the hood. Vaginal myomectomy is used for some mucus, spedunculated or small accessible cervical fibroids are removed vaginally. Legation of pedicle is accessible. Twisting of the fibroids if pedicle is not accessible and case of small and medium sized fibroids. To gain access to pedicle or uh, of higher and um, big fibroid, incision on cervix can be made. Factors favoring vaginal gysterectomy, uterus less than 16 weeks, preferably less than 14 weeks, no associated pathology like endometriosis, pelvic inflammatory diseases, adhesions, uterus mobile and adequate lateral space in pelvis, experienced vaginal surgeon, gysterectomy, this is the definitive treatment for women who have completed their families, and in, in whom uh, other therapeutic modalities have failed. This procedure can be performed by abdominal, laparoscopic or vaginal route. And as we say, it's a definitive treatment for uterine fibroids. Thank you for your attention.